Hello everyone, uh, this is Joel Clark, lead designer of Tian Sheng, All Above Heaven, and Tian Sheng, Lone Wolf Fist, uh, which is a project that I've been battling with for the better part of two years, and I'm finally getting to the point where I'm finishing it, which is really nice. Uh, just to recap the last uh, very energetic few months, uh, we had a successful Kickstarter in uh, December and January, uh, which actually funded over our initial goal. So uh, for the last few months, I've been trying to orchestrate everything uh, design the lingering chunks of the system and compile everything. Um, to that end, I've been talking with our editor Albert Lim and our line editor David Ramirez. So we've been exchanging some emails recently. Um, Albert actually gave me some feedback on the uh, Blood from God's Eye playtest document uh, because he thought uh, marketing wise it needs to be a really good handshake. And also to go along with that, we had someone on the forum or the Discord rather uh, who did a pretty Pretty impressive nosedive into it, and, uh, and and ran into some usability issues that Albert's suggestions would have absolutely solved. So, proof of concept there, Albert. I guess you got proven right. Um, I did that. I've been commissioning art uh, from Kazuki Shinta and uh, a few other artists too. So, just l little stuff like that. Um, some of the bigger parts of the project were already completed prior to the Kickstarter, which I'm really happy with. The majority of the text is actually done. Uh, a lot of what I've been doing these last uh, this last month has just been um, finishing up the parts of the writing that haven't been put into a text document yet, and then going through and grouping the different sections together in a way that reads a lot better and is a lot more usable at the table. And I've been v like going over a a final writing edit, like the last edit before I give it off to the actual editor. Um, and I'm not just looking for spelling and such like there. I'm looking for, do these ideas flow logically? Are they arranged in a way that I can, that I'll reasonably search for an idea where it's presented in the text? Um, are the sequence of ideas, uh, are they set up well to teach the game if you're just reading it straight through? Um, it's stuff like that. And also like somewhat more esoteric elements of the writing, like, is this all tonally consistent? Like, does this all use the same voice? Am I saying you, or am I saying the player, or am I referring to GMs generally? Like, what? who's the text directed at? Um, and there's a lot of little housekeeping things I've been doing. Uh, like today, for instance, I actually spent the better part of two hours just going through the first few techniques I designed um, for the first new style I wrote down. And bringing them up to date since I have like almost I, all but one of the styles done now but I've been bringing them up to date and getting them to the point where all of the techniques have the the correct uh, nomenclature I'm making certain that the rules that they're referencing aren't redundant so like there's a there's a technique that disarms people in one of the styles and there's no reason that those rules should be isolated there those should be in the combat section with the trips and the grabs and the throws which are other things that came up in techniques that you could do with certain uh, super moves that I realized that they there should be a core version of this that's in the text. So a lot of that stuff got taken from a specific widget to general, and I really feel like this is a critical moment. And I say that because one of my readings of the first edition of Exalted was exactly this. I would go through and look at the special powers that would reference things that would happen without the powers that didn't exist in the core text. And it's clear that they wrote the core text first, and then they wrote the specific powers, and it was just, oh, okay, we need 10 sailing charms. So here's a thing that sailing can do, and here's a thing that sailing can do. And they just wrote the charm, and they never went back and sanity checked that and said, okay, but if you were sailing without these charms, are those rules robust enough to require these to solve problems that were never discussed within the text? And they, they really aren't. If uh, first edition Exalted had the benefit of hindsight and was doing the stuff I'm doing right now, it would be a considerably more impressive game and much more use, uh, user friendly and usable. So that's the step I'm doing right now. And I, I feel really justified in doing it, I, even though it is extending the time it takes to, to finish finish the document, because there's some writing that needs to get put up. Um, the right now the uh, the the fighting monsters rules and the vehicle rules are in a very old state. Uh, the domain rules need to be finished and then clarified, integrated. So that's all like work work needs to get done. Uh, in addition, 
Uh, there's little chunks of all of the character lores or all the clan lores that are useful in the character gen that need to get filled out. Um, there are, let me see, and the GM uh, uh, advice chapter needs to get examined and and it, it needs some significant work to make certain the stuff I've written for it and the several tries I've, I've had at that over the years, uh, the best version of that gets compiled. So there's there's some significant work still to be done in, in that direction. And yet here I am on what is effectively completed work, uh, which is all the techniques. I've already posted those up on the Patreon and in other places. Uh, but here I'm working on those again and making certain to do this really crucial step. Now, thankfully, uh, the Kung Fu techniques in my game all reference back directly to the skills. And so the skills are already robustly put together and the way they interact with the world is all really well integrated already. So I don't have to worry about the, uh, the techniques introducing new mechanics as far as interacting with the world or playing the game. Exalted didn't, Exalted didn't have any idea of game process, really. Uh, it had combat flow, and everything else was just like, whatever your heart wants it to be. And that unstructured way of running it, where it was like you start a scene, and then you end a scene, and it's not clear where the lines are. Uh, that messiness really hurt Exalted. Especially because it was clear that the, some of the stuff that I have since refined, because again, I have the benefit of hindsight here and having the, the benefit of having played that game for years. Uh, it's clear that some of the stuff that I'm doing uh, process-wise and, and like game pacing-wise were meant to be an Exalted. Like, I have the equivalent of, I've got like what I've been calling a Prana Flare, but it's the Essence Flare, which was introduced in the first edition of Exalted. And it kind of went along with, because remember, Exalted was a White Wolf game. White Wolf's original er game is Vampire the Masquerade. And so every game kind of harkened back to the design paradigm that was introduced with Vampire. And in Vampire, if you used your vampire powers in a way that normal mortal people could see, you'd break the masquerade. And then, then the whole house of cards that allowed vampires to operate in human society would come crumbling down. And then, you know, human beings start using napalm on slumbering vampires during the day, and it's just a bad scene for vampires. So it was a big deal not to get noticed and yet not use your powers. And interestingly, even though my players are total murder hobos, every time I ran uh, Vampire the Masquerade, every single time, something about the terror of, uh, of breaking the masquerade, something about the faux pas of it, kept them really careful and they really cover their tracks with it. Uh, so I'm, I'm not really sure what element made that happen because here's the real secret to Vampire the Masquerade. As a GM, I didn't have anything in my toolkit for the burning time start again. There's not, I mean, it's just not a game that's designed to do that. It's about be, like the political intrigues of different vampires. I'm drinking hot cocoa right now. This isn't actually coffee. I already had my coffee earlier and it was delicious, but kind of an upset stomach. I think I've been drinking too much coffee lately because I got a mug that's like four times bigger than the mug I was used to. And my thing is I'll just fill up the mug and drink it kind of compulsively while I'm writing. And uh, now that I'm drinking two mugs, I'm drinking roughly eight times the amount of coffee I previously drank, and it's not good for me. Um, so I'm, I'm chilling out on doing that twice a day because I effectively... I'm doing it twice as much as I was doing it beforehand. And, uh, yeah, it, it takes a toll on my, on my old man guts. So hot chocolate it is. Mm. Delicious. And it's got lots of milk in it, too, to cool it down from, like, unsurvivable levels to, you know, don't burn your mouth and die levels. It's definitely really it's important I keep that in. Jesus Christ. Anyway, um, so where was I here? Um, anyway... Uh, so it, my my techniques, they refer back to a really solid skill system and a really solid set of processes is the advantage I have over Exalted. So the only thing I'm having to balance really is combat stuff. And when you're balancing combat stuff against other combat stuff, you really can compare apples to apples. And it's really nice because everything... And I, I was really... I wanted to reduce my workload considerably and put things really close to the same power scale. And so every everything is... Uh, I was and I was talking to um, Ayrton Breck, the guy who, who one of the really big designers, uh, the the big the big two, him and Jerry Skoll were the big designers on Legends of the Woman, along with uh, David Ramirez. But 
my understanding is that David was more an idea guy and worked in the same role he's working in this one, which is he has the original ideas, which basically every idea in this game originated with David, and uh, he's a line editor. He looks over the line to make sure it does what the game, like, it realizes the vision, and um, he's doing a great job with that. And he's doing a great job because he's pretty laissez fair about it. <laughs> he, he'd probably tell he lets me run a hog wild with the project, which is really nice. Um, it's, mm, it's really good. Okay. Um, but I was talking to Eric uh, a while ago, and I was telling him that I was really worried about how some of the... It was difficult to get a specific uh, translator in valuation between the power of a technique and the cost of a technique. And he shared with me the advice that... Uh, perfect does not have to be the adversary of good, I think is what he said. And what he meant by that is that as long as it functions, it doesn't have to be flawless because the, the natural process of playing the game is going to preclude the kind of analysis that you could give to, like say, like a competitive uh, card game. Like uh, Magic the Gathering is a good example of a well-balanced game, kind of, because they still make mistakes. I mean, they're not perfect. They're not machines. But they have like a mathematical symmetry to the core of the game that allows it to function. And the valuation of how different spells work and the mana in, the power out is there's something called the Jedi curve, which is the the, the, the function at the core of that costing mechanism. And they play with it and tweak it every once in a while. But um, they generally get a consistently competitive game with unique cards and effects several times a year and it's really and it's an impressive feat of game engineering but that game also is rigorously tested it has a huge R&D team I mean like they've got a lot of money behind them because it's a huge cash cow and like they have decades worth of knowledge of that level of play testing too so the people that are designing this game have a lot more to work with than a guy like me because I'm only going to make one set ever and it's going to be in this book and the only play testing I can do is going to be purely in-house because once the product is out there the next time i get a chance to get crack at it is in a second ad if that ever happens which yeah you know maybe fingers crossed it's perfect the first time but uh, it doesn't uh, even D is in its fifth edition i don't feel bad about it not being perfect the first time but i do want it to be as good as i can make a first time the first time and I think that's a reasonable standard. I think that's what the people paid for. And I think that's what everybody deserves. You know, we've been waiting for a game like Lone Wolf Fist since Exalted came out, at least. But some people a lot longer. But at least since the first edition of Exalted hit shelves, the promise of a game like this has been on everyone's mind. We've wanted a game that works. And right now, uh, the, the closest that I've seen, uh, like, this, the games that get closest to it have to abstract in ways that are really not satisfying to play and so like i think this game might be the one that finally scratches that niche itch uh, and it feels that way whenever i run it and play it and even the kind of um uh, reasonably but mostly critical response that i've gotten from uh, that most recent uh, playtest group was that it wasn't. It was a question of usability, much less a question of whether or not it was fun and whether or not the game was interesting to players and whether or not it did what it said on the tin. Um, that, that's not terrible advice to get back. That's that's not bad feedback. And the reason I take it seriously is because it was written by someone who clearly does it a lot and feels comfortable at being articulate in their feedback. It was specific, and it was based on experience. And that's the kind of feedback you... Like, I would have paid for that. Like, that's how good it was. I wish that I'd had a chance to actually talk with the guy directly and just kind of answer questions. And um, because the, the text that's available right now in the Quick Start is really rough. Uh, if you compare it to um, the All Above Heaven text, like, you can see the difference that an editor makes and a layout guy makes. And it, it's just, it's a complete world of difference. It's, it's a much higher production value. All of Heaven is a beautiful document. And it's it's smaller, and it's less refined than what wound up in Lone Wolf Fist. And there's, it's a lot, it, it's nowhere near as big as Lone Wolf Fist. Lone Wolf Fist is much, much larger. Even the, the playtest document is, or even the, uh, the quick start is comparatively gigantic. There is, I think, 
two fights <laughs> and that's it you you make a skill check you fight and you fight in uh, all above heaven it's really just a proof of concept kind of uh, game document and in the uh, in blood from god's eye like it's an adventure and a hex crawl and a dungeon crawl and there are vehicles and armies and monsters and really powerful villains and it's like there's so much going on it is a it's it's a rich multi-layered cake slice and it's 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 quite a document for free but it's not edited i uh i revised it with the then current draft of the rules which they're really similar to the ones that i have right now they're just nowhere near streamlined and well integrated um but it was with the, that draft of the rules which is a little outdated now it's starting to creak and there was no editorial and there's no layout uh, so, like, I don't even think it has, like, a table of contents. It's really rough. There are spelling errors. There are syntax errors. Um, there are chunks of it that are missing. Like, there's there's no um, encounter tables. There were in the old document. There's not now. Uh, why? I didn't remember to put them in. I, I did it in, I think, a day. A day or two days. It was a really brief window. So. So, Yeah. <laughs> It, uh, the, the feedback I got, like, it was on known issues. I, I, since releasing it, all I can do is let it sit there. Because, like, I'm not really paying Albert to edit that. I'm, I'm paying him to edit uh, the core document. Um, and as much as I would love him to edit it, like, I'm not going to ask him to work for me for free. I already work for free enough. Um, uh, same thing with Vic. Like, I'm not going to ask him to go in there and do layout on that document until it's got enough lo enough love that it's been edited and honestly it really does require me to go back in there and add elements to it because i'm the main designer of the game it needs the encounter chart that i would put in there it's because i don't have a, a field guide for how to do that for other artists uh, for other writers yet now that being said and i bring it up intentionally one of the things i'm doing before i get back to blood from god's eye is making that document so i don't have to be the guy writing on it um, and i'm doing that because even though i can't pay much i can pay some to writers who really do want to work for me i would love that uh there's been let me see i've already got one guy uh who is an incredibly talented and imaginative dude uh who i've tasked with writing for me and we negotiated for a pretty pitiful but reasonable, I guess, rate. Um, and I've not, I've, I've not really followed up with him. Oh, mm. it's a lot of cocoa. But that might be the very first adventure that you guys get for this game. Um, I've talked with uh, Jerry Scold about maybe doing some writing. Uh, we've not gone past, hey, in the future, if this like bears fruit, do you want to write for me? And him being like, I'll think about it, which I'll take that from Jerry fucking scold, man. No bro. There. But yeah, so, um, this month, that's what's been going on. Uh, mostly I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep these a little shorter. I was trying to do it under 10 minutes. I'm going to try to aim for under 20 here. Cause I don't, I don't want to take up too much of anybody's time. Um, the next thing that's coming, um, for patrons and for backers is going to be the character creation section, which is the clan lores, uh, a, a comprehensive overview on how characters are going to get made in the system uh, with a step-by-step -step process. And you should be able to put a character together for this game within five minutes. It should be really, really simple. And if you want to take a deeper dive, there's enough richness in the system that you'll be able to more carefully put a character together. The, I understand that part of the appeal of a game like this is building a character that you want that really fits your vision. And I've tried to make certain that with the techniques that they cover uh, competency with like the classical weapons that are all that are uh, detailed. So, you know, spear, sword, uh, ranged, i.e. gun, because uh, it's post-apocalypse, uh, 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 unarmed, all that stuff. So there's a style for all of those things. And also, there are styles that are really characterful, like there's a style that's kind of like a ninja. And there's styles that are kind of like uh, benders from the, uh, the Avatar The Last Airbender series. Uh, so you control fire, control earth, or whatever. And again, those aren't just like 
based on that series, although that's one of the most recent and cool examples, they're based on, you know, actual mythology, like everything in this game. Like, it's got some toe somewhere in mythology. So, archetypically speaking, it should be really easy to make most of the characters you see uh, in any of the inspirational uh, sources for this. And that's, you're talking about a whole lot of mythology, a whole lot of pop culture, uh, a whole lot of anime, especially trashy 90s anime. But yeah, if it showed up in Fist of the North Star, you can you can build it like one for one. If it showed up in Vampire Hunter D, you can build it one for one. Uh, uh, Akira, you can build it. You know uh, what else inspired this thing? Avatar, of course. You can you can build your whole army of Firebenders if you actually just did not give a rat's ass about the setting of this game, and you're like, I just want the bending. You could make a pretty reasonable Avatar: The Last Airbender game out of what's in here. I think I even named the chakra the same. So. I mean, come on. Who else is going to give you all of that in the in his Fist of the North Star campaign? You're getting your money's worth, people. Oh, goodness Christ. Tired. Sorry. Um, drinking all that caffeine at once is amazing for, like, the half an hour after you have gotten really into the drinking. But, like, unfortunately, since I'm not getting several cups a day, my energy craters at this time of night. So I thought... You know, I'll do a video. Have a little water here. I think I'm kind of running out of stuff to say. And I busted my 20 minute mark. We'll make it 25 minutes. Okay. Um, where was I? Oh, that's the next thing that's coming out is the character stuff. With that, with the core rules, which you guys already have access to, and the character creation stuff, that's almost everything everyone ever really expected this game to be. So um, there's still more scope to go after that i absolutely want to do all the the different link clan lore stuff where you can make the different lands and, and actually you know design your own places to go and adventures and i want to do monsters and i want to do vehicles that's like critical next level stuff um so that's what's coming next and then the final thing i have to do is the gm chapter and then we're done, done, and it all goes off to Albert. Uh, and then there's probably going to be one or two of these videos with me just saying, well, we were doing editing and nothing. It's not interesting to talk about, but work is getting done. Because it's going to be editing, and then it's going to be layout. And that's it. And then we get the PDF uploaded. Oh, I can't believe how far we've come. It feels like... It, it feels unbelievable to be getting this close to this game being completed. I'm really, really happy. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm just I'm just glowing. Uh, it, getting the character creation chapter done is one of the biggest things. Like, one of the biggest parts of the project. Like, once all the combat stuff is truly and well balanced against each other, the game is like in essence completed and that's such an amazing feeling it'll be good to put a capstone on these two ish it's been more like five years of effort um it'll be really nice to hold this game in my hand i cannot wait for that and i can't wait for you guys to hold it too because this thing is going to be a brick and if you really need to bludgeon someone i i definitely want to be the guy to provide you with the most stylish and well thought out bludgeon available okay so we're under 25 minutes i'm going to call that a win so uh, there's usually a click and a beep whenever I turn these off. So what I'm going to try to do to minimize that is I'm going to mute this. Yeah, yeah. Then I'm going to do it. So we'll see if it works.